What's happening? Welcome to today's video. So we're on episode five now. Sunday morning, um, I'm about to take the first day off I've had in ages, to be honest. And obviously a market show at the weekend, but usually just doing prep and ASR and that kind of thing. So had a busy day yesterday, but today just kind of taking the day off and going golf with uh, some friends. So that should be good. But um, yeah, today's gonna be an interesting video because I'm gonna be talking about what I've been working on recently. So mainly been focused on for the first half of the, of the year working on my A game, but now I'm focused on bringing that B and C game up to a level where it can compete with the A game almost. Because I feel like my technical ability has increased quite a lot in the first six months, but my psychology and my solid B game needs to improve a little bit further. So we're gonna be breaking that down today. It's gonna be good, uh, stay tuned. And when I get a chance to film the rest of the video, we're gonna do a breakdown of that. So stay tuned. Right, so it's a day later now, it's Monday afternoon, and I'm gonna break down for you pretty much exactly what I've been doing for the first half of the year, what I've been focused on, where my intentions have been, and you know what's coming up for the next six months. I just wanna talk about a few different concepts today because I there's a few things that I think will allow you to understand the process I've been through, and one of those processes is called uh, the intro concept. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the book called the mental game of poker, but it's a very good book. It's applicable to trading in so many different ways from a mental aspect. So if you haven't already checked it out, I highly recommend it. Uh, I haven't actually gone through the physical book, but it's one of my plans to go through the physical book. I've just listened to the audiobook, checked out some PDFs, done some breakdowns, especially on this concept as well. Uh, this was more so a subconscious process, but then in hindsight, I looked back and I was like, oh, that's essentially the intro concept. So I'm gonna talk about that today so essentially what I've been doing is for the first half of the year I've been really focused on bringing my A game up so within your trading think of it in the respect that you have different games you have your best game where you perform at your very best i.e your A game then you have a B game which is like a solid middle ground then you have a C game which is essentially how you perform at your worst now if you think about the best traders on the planet or the, the elite traders they're gonna want a a very the, the minimal amount of variance possible right between their their a game and their c game essentially not too much fluctuation they want to keep it consistent they want to keep that equity curve going up steady and not essentially like you know like flipping bombs hit the deck or something so i think that's important because um mark douglas talks about this as well he, he mentions it i think it's called the boom and busters concept so you know that's the, that's the main difference between successful elite traders and an amateur trader that has just come into the markets or maybe is learning or maybe not consistent yet. There's a very big difference. So the goal for me is, th is to now, I still have a bit of fluctuation between that A game, B game and C game. So I want to minimize that as much as possible uh, and get myself to a place where there's very little variance and I can essentially just be as consistent as possible. That's the goal. Um, so yeah. That's what I've been focused on. So in my e-game, I've improved that in the way of more so from a technical ability, but also psychology, because I feel like as I've progressed with my technicals, my psychology has pushed up as well a little bit. But we're going to touch on that in a little bit as well. But yeah, we focused on my e-game, mainly technical focused. I feel like my skill level for the first half of the year has, has definitely increased. And um, it's definitely where my focus has been on my technicals. I've been going through a lot of different content. I've been looking at what I can apply further, what I don't want to apply, and just improving and bettering myself as a trader, to be honest, uh, focusing on what I can refine myself as well. And that's the process I'm about to dig into, which I'm going to talk about that in a bit as well. But yeah, going back to the intro concept before I get into this too much is um, 
Essentially, if you look at an inchworm, maybe you Google it, uh, the way an inchworm works is essentially it looks like exactly like that. So when it moves, in order for it to move, it starts like that and it brings its forward part forward first. Then essentially it needs to bring this, the back part up to then move. So it brings forward first, then the back part moves up and then it just keeps going like that. So that's essentially what I'm trying to do with my training. So like I mentioned before, I'm trying to uh, minimize that variance between where my A game is and where my C game is. I want to minimize that, but I'm not just going from, yeah, I'm not just minimizing that way. I'm also going from move the A game forward and the C game forward, move the A game forward and the C game forward. So that's the way I'm doing it. And um, yeah, that's what I've been focused on really. So my, my best game is my A game. How do I perform at my best? How can I get closer to that? And what things do I, how do I normally perform when I'm at my best? Am I in flow? You know, do, do I do certain things differently? How do I think? What am I thinking at a time of before I take a trade, in the middle of a trade and post trade? Like what am I actually going through at that time? Uh, a great book with this as well as winning in mind. I'm just going through that right now. It's a great, great book about performance and increasing that performance as well. And then C game. Okay, when I'm performing at my worst, what habits do, do I tend to put in place? Is there anything different? Uh, and there are some differences, both mental and physical. So it's, it's about just minimizing that as much as possible. Also in this book as well, in Mental Game of Poker, he talks about a tilt profile, which I've talked about before. So poker players will often go on tilt. So if they make a wrong decision or make a, a bad decision, they can sometimes spiral out and that can cause uh, a series of, of bad decisions, which then essentially is tilt. Um, same thing in trading where you could take a bad trade. I'm sure we've all had it. I've, I've had it definitely um, a lot of times before where you take a bad trade, you make a bad decision and before you know it, you've got two, three trades down the line and you, and you have to take a step back because you catch yourself in that tilt mode where you just, you're just almost in a, in a rut so you have to get yourself out of that. So there's tons of different principles in this book so I highly recommend doing that but that's what I'm going to focus on with that, bringing that game forward which I have done technical ability but I feel like now my C game is lagging behind a little bit. There's still that fluctuation of uh, performance. My A game is, is all the way up here, but if I have a day where I'm not, you know, ultimately in flow or things are, are not quite right, then I'll be, my C game will, all, will be all the way back here. So I need to bring that forward in order to improve my overall performance, because that's what it's about. So this can come in many different aspects, like I just talked about, but one of the aspects that I touched on as well is entries. So I've just been working on this recently because Essentially, I had five different entry types, right? And they're all pretty much, it's pretty much the same entry, but it's applied in different circumstances. It's implied on, uh, depending on the higher time frames or the lower time frames. It depends how far we are into the run as well. So, essentially, how far we are into, or into the into the move. So, if price is, you know, running quite a lot, I want to be a little bit more careful. I want to rather get involved in the trade when it's very early on into the move because that's the best price to get involved in the trade. So what I noticed with the trades, I was going back through some deep ASR recently over the past two weeks and I realized that, okay, using 80-20 principle, the majority of losses were coming from the, from the same places. So I noticed that majority of losses were coming from these three entries, but the 80% of my results were coming from just the two entries, which I kind of knew in the back of my mind, but it was good to cement that. I can actually get the data for that. So once I proved that to myself, I was like, okay, now I need to put something in place to, to perform better. So what I've focused on now is I'm essentially minimizing these. So I've filtered this out for the time being. These can be great entries. There's a reason why I put these in place for the in the first place as a whole. But for now, I just want to focus on these two entries. I trade two pairs. So I trade euro dollar and pound dollar. It's taken me a while to get to that point where you know, I can trade two pairs, I was trading one pair for a little bit and now I feel comfortable to add in another pair. So that's what I'm doing right now. And, you know, if these entries are, are cropping up a few times a week, two pairs is, is more than enough for me. One pair is more than enough, but two pair just gives me that diversification, a bit of a, just a bit of difference, just a bit of, dip. if, if your dollar's not clean for, for one day or two day or a few days or maybe even a week or two, then pound dollar may be clean. So it just gives me that variance and I quite like it. So that's pretty much what I've been working on recently. And I feel like even just applying this for a different aspect, I feel like my technicals have come forward. So essentially like this, imagine this, right? So I've been working focused on my technicals and actually with that, my B game and my C game has naturally improved as well. But my psychology has essentially taken a back. 
my psychology is improved, but I definitely feel like there's some areas that I still need improvement on. Um, especially as you, as you advance as well. Like I was, for example, if you used to be trading on the one hour chart, the four hour chart, and you maybe take, let's say you, you would have taken two or three trades a, uh, a week, for example, right? And then if you get further into your journey, you find your style, you found something, you've developed your own essentially mechanism to, to just perform well. Now you could take, it, that can go from like two or three trades a week to like eight or 10. So if you take eight or trade, 10 trades a week, there's gonna be more variance, there's gonna be more frequency. So naturally that there's, there's certain things that come with that. If you take, you know, you could have taken, let's say you take two losses in a row uh, when you're trading on the one hour chart and that happens over the course of two weeks, it's completely different. That could happen in, in the space of two days or a day now. So it's getting your mindset and your psychology adjusted to that uh, and being able to do that at scale. So just putting things in place to do that. So I think you, you all know what I mean by that. But yeah, essentially what we're doing, like I said, is, is just moving for, I've been moving that A game forward, B game to come forward with that. But I feel like the psychology is, is only improved a little bit. So the goal now is just to bring this up to a place where I could just overall perform really well. So what I'm essentially doing that with the, with the psychology part is I'm just gonna be focused on uh, mostly just psychology stuff, you know, books, different material, focused on refining my own things, taking a just self-awareness as well, just taking a third, a third person point of view and just being like, how am I performing today? Um, just keep myself in check. Like if you look to the side here, I've actually got a calendar. So for the next six months, I'm just like tracking every single day, pretty much what I'm doing. Um, just, just like a basic routine, just keep myself disciplined. I've always been very good at keeping myself accountable. Um, I've always not really had a problem with that, but just to raise that accountability even more, I'm just doing this. Um, and it's just like little things such as, okay, am I eating healthily every single day? Am I putting myself in the best mental or physical environment every single day? Or am I working out every single day or most days or doing something different per day? And just little things like that. It may not seem like a, a, a massive thing and it may be completely different to trading from some people's aspects, but you've got to realize that trading is not just trading a strategy. Trading is not just trading a style. For people who, you know, just want to be consistent or have that goal of being consistent, yeah, you may not go to the lengths that I'm going, but my goal has never been just consistency. My goal has been, uh, you know, as, especially as, as I've developed, I've always wanted more than that. I want to become a master of my skill. In order to do that, you have to sometimes do things that normal people wouldn't do. There's levels to the game as well. You get people who, you know, wanna wanna get out of the nine to five rap race and they, they wanna go into trading. That's a level in itself. Then you've got the new levels of, okay, they wanna go from that to then trading full time. And then you've got full time to then consistent and consistent to mastery of skills. So there's different levels along the path. There's no right or wrong, whichever level you, you wanna go for. But for me, I just wanna go right the way. If I've got this far, I, w I want to go. I might as well go all the way, and that's going to take sacrifice. Uh, but I've already sacrificed a bunch so far, so I don't feel like I should stop now, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I just put, put, keep myself in check and just doing different things, like I said, healthy eating and stuff like that. May need, may not seem like directly affectable to trading, but for me, it really is. If I don't eat healthily, and let's say I start snacking on foods I shouldn't do, it spirals out because that decision. In the back of your mind, you almost feel, I don't want to say guilty, but you know you've made a wrong decision. So that can sometimes spiral out into trading, I feel. It's just the same in performance. So if I keep myself in check, that performance just creeps through into trading. Um, and that's what I found for myself. So yeah, that's what I'm pretty much gonna be working on going forward. Um, and I think, like I said, there's different levels and I think people are focused on uh, obviously becoming consistent and stuff, but for me, it's, it's always been more than that. I want to become more than that. I just don't want to be, uh, I just don't want to settle, put it that way. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think the main takeaway that I would personally look at is just self-reflection. Look at your own journey and be like, okay, what are my strengths within my trading? Okay, let's build on them. But also what are my weaknesses within my trading? What am I maybe not so good at yet? How can I build on them? How can I strengthen them? How can I become a better trader through building that? So that's what I personally look at. You know, a lot of things in trading come down to self-reflection in my eyes. It's not just as simple as, you know, people think where, I mean, how many times do I talk about this? You know, it's not just trading as trading strategies, not being able to trade as trading style. 
you know that's the very simplistic part there's so much beyond that as well that you have to work on um so that'll be the key message today hopefully the whole inchworm theory and a few resources to take a look at so once again check out the mental game of poker and check out winning in mind um, because they're two great great books so hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh stay tuned for the next one hopefully you can get on more of a schedule i don't really like to do a schedule of youtube because i want to be more in creative mode if i'm not feeling creative i'm not feeling up to it i'm just not going to film but i think i will be doing more videos recently because instead of spending time uh you know going through content and this sort of stuff i'm gonna be focused on my psychology which should free up more time um and just allow me to just focus on just trade a lot more as well uh, i'm already trading obviously but just allow me to be able to have more of a routine in trading not just be like cool work block content cool work block this work block that just focus on trading for a little bit as well so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, i will catch you in the next one speak to you all soon